Jordan, Jordan's Principle by Anish Kulkarni. Jordan's Principle is a resistance, first of all. Uh, it, it's a government program that was created in 2007, made for indigenous people and children that are neglected by the Canadian government. It was created after Jordan River Anderson, a boy with Carrie Feynman Zeter syndrome, <laughs> died in a hospital because the government could not decide who should pay for his treatments. Jordan's principle covers many aspects of social services, such as mental health, special education, physiotherapy, and more. Uh, it has a budget based off of requests and, and not and it's not fixed uh, so that the Canadian government is not stingy and it doesn't like like make a really small budget so that it doesn't have to pay a lot of money to the indigenous kids that really need the help. Uh, it, it is a resistance. It, it's made to repay the debts caused by colonization. Uh, and it, it is a resistance because uh, the colonizers that came to Canada back in the very early days before Canada was made did not intend uh, for Canadian or uh, indigenous children to have the same quality of life as non-indigenous children. Second of all, importance. Jordan's principle is incredibly important to many indigenous children's livelihoods. It also helps us bridge the gap between colonizer and indigenous people's standard of living. Jordan's principle also helps us remember Canada's past. It is an effect of a racist cause and, and, and hundreds of years of injustices. Uh, it also is a bridge to the future, as Jordan's principle is a first of many steps into the equalization of the qualities of lives of uh, non-indigenous children and indigenous children, and basically everyone in Canada. It It is related to UNDRIP Articles 21 and 22. UNDRIP Article 21 states, Indigenous peoples have the right without discrimination to the improvement of their economic and social conditions, including inter alia in the areas of education, employment, vocational training, and retraining, housing, sanitation, health, and social security. Uh, this, this relates to Jordan's principle because, uh, as I stated before, Jordan's principle is related to social security, and uh, Article 21 is talking about education and employment, which is part of what Jordan's Principle is trying uh, to uh, tackle. Uh, it, Article 21 also states, states shall take effective measures and, where appropriate, uh, special measures to ensure continuing improvement of their economic and social conditions. Uh, so this is uh, also talking about Jordan's Principle because uh, the Canadian government is a state and it, it is taking effective measures uh, to improve the indigenous people's social conditions. Uh, Article 22 states, uh, particular attention should be, should be paid to the rights and special needs of indigenous elders, women, youth, children, and persons with disabilities. And over here, they're talking, they're like really talking about children, uh, you know, because Jordan River Anderson died, a young boy who was a child, so they are taking care of children. Connection to treaties and the Indian Act. So the connection to the Indian Act is how the indigenous people were not allowed to use their medicines. They took away the indigenous healer land, and then the Department of Indian Affairs and uh, creating the medical services branch. And, and I'll go in more depth into these. So, so that's for the connection to the Indian Act, the Indian Act actually banned indigenous healers and moved the responsibility of indigenous healthcare to the federal government. Uh, this removed indigenous healers from their own land, leading, leading to poverty, which had detrimental effects on indigenous people's health. Also, 
when the healthcare responsibilities were moved away from the uh, indigenous healers, the Canadian government, they, they did not have the same knowledge as the indigenous healers who have been taught by many different generations. So an example of this is the treatment for frostbite. Uh, when the Canadian government took over in the Indian Act of 1867, uh, th when they took over, they didn't use the indigenous way of he healing frostbite, which the Inuit had perfected, and that actually led to many people, many indigenous peoples, uh, dying because uh, they they weren't treated properly in the way that they should have been. And so, like, this related to Jordan's principle because, like, Jordan's principle is kind of moving back, you know, giving these these indigenous people their land back for healing, for health care. And it's also, like, get, letting them have some more freedom and actually ha healing themselves for, like, for Inuit frostbite. Uh, and the connection to the treaties, uh, there was an agreement made by the federal government in the 1960s. And that led to healthcare being remaining in insufficient and underfunded. Also, there was Treaty 8. It described how every Indian agent on the Indian reserves uh, had a medical kit, a, a med kit for every indigenous person to uh, use. But there was only one. So, like, every indigenous person only could use this one kit. And that kind of led to lots of disease and more problems being spread throughout because there was not enough for all the people in the indigenous communities. Uh, and this actually led up to Jordan River Anderson's death because even though there was no Indian agent at that time in his community, there still was not enough money being poured through into the indigenous communities. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, also this federal government agreement has a terrible way to source healthcare to indigenous communities which led to Jordan River Anderson's death, subsequently leading to Jordan's principle. Finally, some ways you can help. So first of all, uh, you can vote, you can spread the word, learn about the injustices, and donate to related, related charities, and sign some petitions. So first of all, Jordan's principle is an amazing thing to support. It supports millions of indigenous people's children across Canada. You can individually help and also talk to others. Firstly, you can vote or get others who are eligible to vote to vote. Voting in the right candidates can remove biases and other racist principles from our Canadian governmental system, which would help millions of indigenous people across Canada who have been wronged by the Canadian government and colonizers for centuries. Second, you can also spread the word. Uh, so spreading the word, you can just s send some articles or something, and also on top of that, you can educate yourself. So uh, educating yourself is really good because uh, like you can learn about injustices going on that are currently going on that most definitely need help. Uh, so the the only way to spark social change is like with many people uh, trying to spark social change at once. One person trying to get some change to happen is not going to work. So you need to educate yourself about the things that are going on and, and try to get yourself involved. Uh, also, you can also donate to charities. So you can uh, donate to charities such as Not Just Tourists and True North Aid. These are two charities that are dedicated to helping indigenous people with their health care. And they're really great charities as they'll also help advance Jordan's principles and other future government social service programs for indigenous children. Um, they can, you can also, finally, you can also do some petitions, sign some petitions. These can be found on websites which are very popular, like change.org. I'm sure many people have heard of change.org and petitions.ca. Uh, petitions.ca is also a really great source to sign petitions. Um, anyways, that's all. Uh, that's all the ways you can help. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, these are these are my sources. Sources.